In this uh, demo of uh, MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse, we have taken the airport DB schema from an on-premises MySQL database and exported it to the OCI object store. For each table, it's created a bunch of files. The one that we are most interested in are the TXT files for they contain the data that we want to bring into Heatwave. For each table, we are going to create a pre-authenticated request URL, a PAR URL, and we will use that in autopilot later on. We could also use resource principles to do that, and we will take a look at that in the demo later on. The next step is to attach a Heatwave cluster to my MySQL database instance. I select a shape that I want to attach, and I specify how many nodes I want, which could be anywhere from 1 to 512 nodes. And I check the box that says MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse and click the Add Heatwave Cluster button. It takes a few minutes for the Heatwave node to be provisioned and attached to my MySQL database. And once it is done, I can verify that I have it up and running. We will now move to the MySQL Shell plugin for Visual Studio Code, which has got a bunch of integrations built in with OCI and Heatwave. To run Autopilot, I will pass it a few parameters, including the database that I want to bring the data in and the tables I want to bring in. For each table, I'm specifying the format, the column separator, and the PAR URL that I just created for these tables. Once I run Autopilot, it comes back with a bunch of output, including how many tables I have, whether they exist or not, what is the raw file size, how many rows each table has, and so on. I ran it in dry run mode, which means it's done all of this, but not actually run the commands. How much memory I need in my Heatwave cluster and how much memory I need to store the metadata in my MySQL node. What are all the commands that I need? Heatwave has also created and made them available. For each table, it has done auto schema inference, figured out the number of columns, the data types, so the precisions of those columns, and incorporated the information that I gave it by way of the par URLs into the create table statement. This is an example of using resource principles to specify the location of the data for your tables. I now run all of those commands and all the 14 tables are now created and available in Heatwave, but they do not yet have any data loaded to them. To do that, I'm again going to call autopilot, but this time I'm going to call it in normal mode, which means it's going to do all the same things that it did earlier on, but it is going to go ahead and create the tables. In this case, the tables are already created, so it's going to skip that step, but it is going to go ahead and load the data for all 14 tables from the object store into Heatwave. So you can see it has done all the things that it did when I ran autopilot in dry run mode, but it has now gone one step ahead and loaded the data for all the 14 tables from the object store. And for each table, it's created one tab so I can see what the status is of that operation, whether it is completed successfully, how much time it took, and so on. Once this is completed, I can go ahead and run some queries from my SQL prompt to see, for example, how many rows have been loaded into, say, the bookings table. And in this case, I can see it's loaded uh, all 54 million or so rows. I can also take a look at what the data looks like. Let's again take the booking table. I will only take a look at two rows. And this is uh, the output. I can even run, obviously, more advanced, sophisticated queries. And if you see, this is a particularly, uh, this is a query that joins several tables together. And this is what the data looks like. Now, if I run an explain plan on this query, it will also show me where this query ran. And if I scroll to the right, it shows that this query ran in Heatwave. For the next part of the demo, let's move to Oracle Analytics Cloud, the BI tool in the cloud. And to create dashboards and reports, first of all, I'm going to connect to my Heatwave instance create a connection, provide certain details as to where this instance is running, a username and password to connect to, and the schema that I'm interested in. Once it does that, it shows me all the schemas that this user that I've connected as has access to. I'm interested in the airport DB schema 
and I have all the tables created uh, available here. I will drag and drop a few of those tables to my canvas. OSC shows me all the columns, uh, uh, the shape of the data and so on. I can create joints across multiple tables and essentially create my data set. Once a data set is created, I will save it and then go ahead and use this data set for creating my workbooks, my views, my visualizations, my dashboards and everything. So for those from these three tables, I'm going to drag and drop certain columns. And as I do that, OAC runs queries to get a sample of the data. And it also creates visualizations based on the data that I have. I can create conditional formats and everything. And all of this runs in real time against my MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse data loaded in memory.